This live martial arts class will discover the best weapons for street fight self-defense. In this case, we're using the martial arts staff, the long staff, which is also known as a Japanese bow or the Korean jangbong, Chinese bong, or in the other hand, we have the short staff, the Japanese joe. And these are two of my favorite weapons of all time. You can use either one for this workout. But first I wanna talk about principles of street fight self-defense. Number one principle is pay attention, make sure you know what's going on around you. And number two is create distance between you and the threat using your weapon. And that's where we're gonna get started right away. From the start, you're gonna put your staff between you and the threat. So you walk with it as if you were using a walking stick or walking staff in this case, and you're gonna turn your thumb at the threat. Just point your thumb right at the threat when you do that. The staff comes into your back hand. Now you have a firm grip. You have this long length between you and the threat. The next thing to do is strike. So from here, create that distance and strike. And this is your warm up with the, the uh, Japanese bow. From here, put it in your back hand, push. From here, push. Just hard striking through the middle. You have to learn this basic strike first. Self-defense is very important. It's important. Also, it's fun to do all of the spinning. The spinning is more like um, exercise, like a boxer would do, jumping rope or push-ups to get stronger, faster, more conditioned. You do that with the staff, but you learn how to fight with the staff. We're talking strikes, blocks, strikes like this, coming in hard and fast. You can get those harder and faster by doing the spins. We're going to do that in this workout too. So between you and the threat, you point your thumb. Take a look at the Joe. It's pretty much the same thing, only it's shorter. It comes up about mid bicep or right into that armpit. You point your thumb. Now, the distance between you and the threat is shorter until you push with the back hand. So this front hand, you allow yourself really to push in hard and you'll see I'm turning up at the end as I go through my target. So for street fight self-defense, basic principles, pay attention. Number two, put some distance between you and the threat. Point your thumb at the threat. Your staff comes into that back hand. You're ready to do that first spearing strike or spearing motion. Just going right through your opponent, right through their guts, right through the neck, through the face. For self-defense, from here, you also have that basic strike that you have with the longer staff. Coming down here, from here, you can lift that hand up, sliding forward, you have that, also you have that same strike with the longer staff, you're just moving your hand on it. But they, and they're gonna move in completely different ways. Now I wanna talk about spinning. You have your Joe, you start in this position, and you spin it in the same way you would your long staff for that uh, figure eight spin or the infinity spin. And this also becomes a strike with this shorter weapon. From here, I can bring this up very quickly into the opponent's face, knocking them back, creating some distance. It's very quick and it's actually a strike. It might not be a strike with the long staff. The long staff, you don't have that same strike. Well, you, you can do it, obviously. But you do the spinning with the long staff more for warming up the body, getting stronger, getting faster, but it's the exact same figure eight spin. Now, the warm up spins with the Joe start in the same way, but again, you now are gonna get uh, stronger, faster wrists. You're gonna have harder strikes because you have more of the staff coming out of one side, so there's leverage on your wrist. If you're holding it in the middle, you could spin a lot faster, it would look a lot like the other staff, but this staff spins from here, coming up. Now, the second way that you spin the staff, changing hand position, is like you would spin a sword. But this principle is the same. You're gonna use the longer part of the weapon to strike, to knock the guy back, to create distance between you and the threat, multiple attackers, street fight self-defense, there are a lot of options in this hand position and then back in this hand position. And it kind of looks like if you think about like the reverse sword position, 
that you see in some movies like um, Star Wars or the Chinese movies where they spin staffs. Mulan's coming out. When they finally reopen everything and go back to the theater, you'll see Mulan fighting like this with her sword. And then you'll also see her changing hand position and fighting like that with that Japanese, I think you call it a Tao. Anyway, uh, not, not Japanese, Chinese. The Chinese or the Japanese style or the lightsaber style, same thing. This forward or positive grip is also that negative grip. This is a big heavy staff. I'm gonna just whack myself. That'll probably happen in this workout. I'm a little tired today. I overdid it on the pull-ups yesterday. Got all excited. I got all the rings up, all the pulling stations in the gym or the studio, whatever you want to call it. So I did pull-ups and push-ups all day. From here, back to here. And this is how you spin the sh shorter weapon, the Joe. But you also are gonna do a lot of things getting into that backhand and this pushing strike. You also have coming down right on top of their head, not like a baseball bat, because this hand is going to push that at the same time, just in like that, pushing in. So from here, from this position, your warm up spin, which is also we talked about a strike, and then practice in the other hand, and the way you do the transfer on the short staff, not the same as the bow, I'm gonna show you that in a second. Just bring the other hand over, and now it's in the other hand, the other foot's forward. And same thing, this is a strike. Coming forward, change your hand position, go into this strike. It's figure eight motion, back into that position. Practice back and forth. Watch what my hand does to make that happen. So as it goes down, just holding it in the thumb and the finger. I push with my finger. I'm using that momentum because it's going down anyway, right? I push. And then it's between those two fingers. Excellent. And then back into this position. From here, I just pull that finger out. And I'm back into this position. Bringing it through, trying not to hit the camera. Pop it between the first finger and then back into this one. I love this big, I don't know if you can see how thick that is. It's about a half an inch thicker than all my other staffs. And I like it because it goes through the fingers and really stretches them out. You talk about keeping your hands and your wrists and your forearms healthy with the staff. Doing the spinning helps with those extenders or extensors, getting that, that hand open, not just closed. All right, so back to the long staff. We go back into this position, the staff's between me and you. We're gonna go over that here in a second, how to get better at the finger rolls. From here, when you pick it up into that position, getting that distance between you, here's the threat from here. I have that first spearing motion, and it's similar in that I'm gonna turn that back hand up to kind of lock that into this position. Now, if I hit them, they're charging at me, it will push my body back, but it's not gonna push my arm back. If I go like this, it's gonna push your arm back. It's a lot of pressure on your shoulder. If you're like this, you're, you're not going anywhere. They're not gonna move through your staff. You create that distance into them. It's your warm up practice. Three, four, harder and faster. When we talk about street fight self defense and weapons, especially, you wanna be able to move as fast as you possibly can. A fight has to be fast, right? Here, and then the second one, striking down. From ear to ear, comes over that elbow, down this way, three, four, do like 30 seconds of each strike, and then number three, across the face, just coming through, smashing right through. Yes, it'll, it'll depend, you'll get a feel for it. Once you get really strong, the momentum of a heavier staff allows it to keep going, right? The much lighter staffs are harder to keep going. And you have to really see how I'm starting to move. If I start to move my hand, see how my hand goes around like this? That's gonna allow me more uh, leverage, flexibility. It's gonna get that staff around better. But this is a heavy staff, I don't need it. 
with this. All I have to do is get it going, invite it to move, and the weight of the staff is gonna take it around. That's gonna be true for a heavier staff. If you don't have a heavier staff and you wanna increase your speed, you might have to add a little bit extra motion in your hand, just like that. But you'll figure it out. It'll come, become easier and easier. All right, so we have warm up, two, three, three strikes there to practice today. I'm going to go into getting the hands and the wrists ready for that spinning, especially if you have a heavier staff. I know some of you have heavier staffs. You're going to do this motion slowly until you feel where it wants to keep going. And don't overdo it. Don't go too far. Gradually, every day, practice like 30 seconds seconds per hand by the end of the week you'll be stronger excellent good for you it's definitely progress right now speed up and force yourself to drop it and you'll keep making progress but 30 seconds start to go faster but not too fast if you have a very heavy staff and it's a lot for your wrist allow yourself some time it won't take that much time Go slower. This is to strengthen the hands. If you have a heavy staff, slowly, 30 seconds per side, gradually increasing strength. And then by the end of a week, a little faster. Two weeks later, a little faster and faster. And then the other one. Then going from one side to the other side. One side. So if, you're, if you practice 15 to 20 minutes and you haven't dropped your staff at all, that's an excellent sign of progress. It's also the time to start to go faster and push yourself out of your comfort zone. So it's two things. It's a good sign that you're making incredible progress. You're past the uh, stage of a beginner, but it's also time to level up. So go faster and faster. So going out one way and then out the other way, this is also the next step in this warm up for the staff. One, two, and you'll see that that moving from one side to the other side increases the momentum, the speed. So that's giving me more strength, more flexibility. But it's also teaching you how to go from one hand to the other hand, one hand, to the other hand, one, two. Then from here, I want you to go around the back of your wrist. And I know this is not easy. I'm not expecting this to come for you like right away, but I know you'll get it. It's like yoga. When you go into a yoga pose and it's outside of your comfort zone, you're stretching, you're not quite there yet. You just move in that direction, not hard. You don't have to rip anything. Move in the direction of the stretch and you'll get there. It might take a week, two weeks, three months, six months but you'll get there and six months is gonna pass anyway. 10 years will pass anyway. You're gonna be 10 years older in 10 years. You might as well be a master of something in the next 10 years. So we, we went back and forth, right? When you come here, slow way, way down, let it kind of balance on the back of that hand and then flip that hand over to catch it. Let it balance, flip the hand. And I say flip and that kind of is confusing I think because if you Flip, flip sounds like an explosive motion, right? If you flip, you're gonna knock your staff out of there. So maybe I should say gently, but quickly, turn. Balance, turn. This is your warm up. this is your practice. This is how you get good at the wrist roll. And like I said before, this wrist roll, you might not use this when you fight for self-defense, for street fight self-defense. But just like a boxer jumps rope, right? You gotta jump rope, get your footwork, condition your body. This is conditioning your arms, your hands. And a boxer does push-ups, a boxer does pull-ups, a boxer does sit-ups, it has people punch them in the stomach. They're not gonna do that in the fight. But because they did that in practice, because you did this in practice, when it comes to street fight self-defense, and you're here, bam, and you go right in for that self-defense move. You're gonna be, strike harder, strike faster. Your accuracy is gonna be dead on. It means you're gonna hit exactly where you wanna hit, and they're not gonna be able to avoid it. All from this basic spinning practice. So this is the wrist roll over the back of the hand. Then go back the other way. 
They're both over the back of the hand. One goes over the pinky side. Here's the pinky side. The other goes over the thumb side. Thumb, pinky, thumb. And see how I'm, it's all about being calm. When you fight, this is very important. It's like a race car driver, right? A race car driver, they have to take that turn as fast as they possibly can. The more they slow down, the more they give the chance for the other car to pass them by. So when that race car driver comes into that corner, he's going left, he looks left, and then his car follows left, and he, he can't slow down. But if he's coming at that wall at 200 miles an hour, if he freaks out, if you freak out, you're going to drop your staff. If he freaks out, he's going to crash his car, roll his car, right? So what he does is he breathes. You're going to breathe. He, he's practiced. He went slow and then a little faster and a little faster. You're going, to go, you're going to go slow and then faster and faster until you're really good at it. Just like that race car driver, he calms down. He doesn't slow down. If he slows down, he loses the race. If you slow down in, in fighting, self-defense street fight, you go slow because you're uncomfortable. You're going to get the snot kicked out of you, right? Good morning, Vic. I'm saying you've got to calm down. Don't slow down. When you fight hard and fast every single time, fighting as quickly as you can, spinning that staff, moving as fast as you can, learn how to calm down and not slow down. So here, we're working on these wrist rolls again. We started here, and we went from one side to the next. And this is all about giving yourself the feeling of this turn. This isn't that next level curriculum. If you're like Vic, you're about past the first level. White the yellow belt, he's gonna get that yellow belt. He's ready to go on to the next, the orange. This is in the next level, the wrist rolls. So you just calm it down, let it balance, and then bring it back. And again, if you flip your hand and bounce your staff out of there, good then you have to turn instead of flip. Turn, turn. Then do the other side, 30 seconds per side on each one of these moves. That's all that is. I know, and, it, and I know it looks easier than it is when you start doing it. Then I want you to go from hand, or from one side to the next, in that figure eight spin where we were earlier. Then I want you to add a wrist roll and when it's, it's my right hand, when it's on the right side, it's going to go over the back of the hand. When I bring it back to the left, they're both going over the back of the hand. It's going to go over the thumb side. When it's on the opposite side of the body, when it's on the same side, right hand, right side, it's going over the pinky or small side of your hand. Thumb side, one, two, one, two, put it in the other hand, same thing. Left hand, left side, that's all that is. Bring it over here. Turn, turning, turning. And then I want you to level up. Go over the back of your hand and then back of the hand. So now you're changing hands and every time you change the other side, this is the same way we started. Remember we were doing this and this. So I go over the back of the hand to start, bring it to the opposite side, this left side. I go over the back of the hand. This is the right side starts there. Then I roll the back of the hand. Left side starts there. Back of the hand, right. Back of the hand. Then reverse it. Go over the thumb. Take it on the opposite side with the opposite hand. Left hand to the right side. Take it back, let it go over back of the hand, slide in the right hand. This is how you free flow, by the way. And again, why do you free flow in uh, street fight self-defense? <laughs> well, hopefully you flow when you fight, right? But this is cross training. This is that jump rope. This is conditioning the body to do it without thinking. So when you fight, I don't know what I did over there. When you fight, yeah, so let's, let's look at that again. Um, a wrist roll goes over the thumb side or the pinky side first. We'll just stay forward. 
and then we'll say, they're both this, about the same. I don't know that it matters if we say forward or reverse, but let's say, yeah, it is difficult. So start here and then balance it. Or better yet, find your balance here. Turn your hand and find your balance there. And you, know, you, you can use your other hand. So find your balance. Let's see, where is it? Right, right about there. Turn your hand, find your balance. What you're doing is you're making a connection between your hand and your brain. That's all it is. It's what you have to do. Find your balance. Start here. Start here. And then when you're here, slowly turn it. Open the hand. See if you can get the balance on the wrist. Turn your hand under. See this hand? I'm helping it, keeping it from, you can do that. There's no way to do it wrong. And then thumb side, we'll call that reverse. It's the same thing. But watch, if I can, I can do this like all day. And I don't know if you see my hand is sliding to refine the center or re readjust to the center. But when I go this way, for whatever reason, it's not as intuitive. I have to think about it a little bit more to make more of an effort to refine the center, to go back to the center. And that's usually what I think gets most people stuck is when you come back this way, like this way, is in, it's almost instinctive. You don't even think about it. And maybe because it's the small side of the hand, but this way, that big old chunky thumb gets in there. Yeah, so it's, it's um, there's uh, the Filipina, there was a girl, her Filipina something was her uh, username, and um, she said her coach told her something. And I forget exactly how she said it, but something about flipping and finding the center or something. But it's exactly right. I mean, that's basically what you're doing. And I've probably done it for so long that I don't even think about it. But you do. You have to allow your hand to slide in and your hand to slide out, which is useful for street fight self-defense when you're here and then you want to come here and then you want to sweep the leg, you want to smash on top, bring it down this way, spear, change your hand position, hit them on this side, and all that comes from the spinning. That's why this conditioning is so important. All right, last one, finger roll. Thumb, first finger. The thumb is starting it off. We're gonna do a continuous finger roll first. It's just like when you rolled a pencil in school because you're so bored because it was too easy for you, whatever they were teaching. You're sitting there twirling your fingers. It's the same thing, it's just a much bigger pencil. Now I'm going up and down. You can also reverse it and go the other way, but you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to think about it for a minute, right? But you can. Once you get it this way, and I haven't done the reverse in a while, then force yourself back. If you wanna challenge, when you get here, your thumb is gonna assist a little bit. There's going forward. It's not as important to go backward. This is mostly, there's backward a little bit. I have to work on that. I'll work on that and I'll come back to it with you. But you want to really stretch out the forearm, right? So this is the continuous finger roll, but I also want you to know about the three finger roll, which is when the pinky and the ring finger catch it. And then those first three fingers go straight together. And then your thumb is going to pop up and continue it. Uh, was the continuous. All right, so I go one, two, three, down, my three fingers together. My thumb allows me to continue it. So it's three fingers and a thumb, where the other one, the thumb, the thumb starts it, but then it gets out of the way. Thank you, I appreciate that. Same thing, fingers, this feels really good. This is the arm I overdid it with yesterday. I was swinging some kettlebells, and then I got really into the Indian clubs, and I started doing pull-ups. I have these uh, pull-up rings up, I've got the rope up, and um, just pull ups and push ups, pull ups and push ups. Sometimes that's the best workout for me. Also, squats. I love squats because that gets your blood chemistry right. So you lean out faster and you grow and you stay young. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So, fingers. And then when you go down to the pinky finger and the ring finger, pop those three together, grab your thumb, catch it, and keep it going. Once you have that, and again, one, two, three, three fingers, 
There's the thumb. Now you go back, you back into your grip. One more time. One, two, three. Thumb. Go into your figure eight. Do your finger roll. Figure eight, fingers. Figure eight, fingers. And then wrist roll. And I'm gonna grab the Joe again in a second because we started with both staffs. And I wanna show you why um, we, you need the finger roll for the Joe, especially. In, this, in the Joe, when you have the Joe, uh, spinning the staff becomes big part of self-defense. So you, you have all of these motions swinging through. This is one of my favorite blocks. And then you come through and striking, switching hands, and then bringing it down on top of their head with your hand here, the hand in the back. But there are a million things. From here, strike, push, sweep, and then you go back into your roll or your striking. Because from here, you approach me really fast. I say stop, stay back, I'll defend myself. And I hit you with that first spin. So now you are using spinning with the Joe for self-defense. From here, I can push it, and then you see there's all kinds of things that you can do with the spin. It increases speed. So the Joe is designed, it was, it's a derivative of the bow. I mean, it came from it, right? The story is the, uh, the monk, the Japanese monk, he's traveling the countryside. Um, Musashi, the famous swordsman, he's traveling the countryside. They battle each other the first time just to see who's better because that's the kind of people they are. See who's the better fighter. Musashi wins. And Musashi's smart. He's always not just fighting, but he's thinking how to set things up. So he fights them in the trees. So the guy who's the master of the bow keeps getting his staff caught in the tree branches and he can't fight. He can't do what he wants to. Frustrated and defeated, he goes back up the mountain, you know, because you always go up the mountain to think. And while he's there, it occurs to him, he needs to cut it down. So he cuts it down, and then all of a sudden, he's got a much different weapon. A lot of the things are the same, but in this case, it's different. So back to where we started with this staff, we were doing the figure eight or infinity spin, and then I said, you can go through the fingers, get, get my momentum up, this is a really heavy, heavy staff. So from here, you've got your finger rolls. There we go, let me take my ring off. Finger rolls, goes through your fingers, finger roll. By the way, you don't always have to take your ring off, but in this case, I'll ask you a question again, it just went away. From here, finger rolls, finger rolls. So your questions only last on my screen for like 30 seconds, or not even that, like 10 seconds. So ask me that silly question one more time. But you have that finger roll, but the purpose of the finger roll is to go into this different hand position because from here, you're gonna use it both I don't, it depends on the, it's like every other martial arts question. Which martial artist would win? Um, the uh, Muay Thai guy, right? Or the Taekwondo guy? The Wushu Kung Fu guy? And if there are no rules, um, it, it, and it all, all comes down to the, uh, the, the fighter himself or herself. Whoever is better, trained better, and then luck. Luck's always going to be 10%. Luck's always 10%. But then the conditions, you just said, open space, right? Bow staff, think about the bow. It's so much longer, but think about the katana. All he has to do is, is get you a little bit, you know, and you're dead. So it's really hard to say, I don't know. I would say that they both have incredible advantages. The bow is the length. And if he knows how to use it and he's quick and he's well-trained and the other guy is, has the katana and he's not necessarily as good, yeah, exactly. So, um, but, you know, and then, the, and then if you had the bow, you wouldn't block like this against the katana, he's gonna cut right through it. You would block like this and you would knock it to the side. That's, by the way, that's how you block a bladed weapon. If it's a knife, you, and if you can, block the hand that's holding it, don't block the weapon. But if you have to block the weapon, that's where all of this twisting comes in. Because I'm gonna hit, as you come down the middle, from here, I'm going to, hit the side and use that spiraling motion to knock it to the side. And then once I do, I come straight in right through your throat, right? Or right in your eye. But it's a great question. Those are really good questions. Um, hopefully we'll never find out. Hopefully you won't find out. But it's fun. And if you are in a school like this 
we'll get them out, we'll get out the wooden sword, the boken, and we'll practice. And we'll see what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages. Weapon to weapon. One of my favorite things to do is practice short staff Joe against bow. And there are a million things. I've got all these drills for partners. If I ever see you in person, I'll, give, I'll put, stick a, a bow in your hand, we'll get to Joe, we'll take turns, and you can learn. Yes, it is. And, you know, and it's fun too. It changes your, changes your brain, it changes all those neural pathways. But anyway, so we have this coming into this. And that's the purpose of the finger roll in the Joe. So that's all I got for right now. I have more of these coming later this week. We have a lot of new weapons that I want to work on. Or not new weapons, but new ways to work with the weapons. Thank you so much for all your comments. Check the, if you want to earn rank in this uh, system, and it's the long staff, but it's going to have like at different levels, it's going to have uh, some instruction for the Joe, uh, because you know, I think it's useful to know both of them, but at a higher level, master the basics of the big staff first, and then we'll go into this one. That makes sense to me. That's how I learned it. Um, but this next level, if you're already closing in like Vic on the next level from this one, we're now adding wrist rolls and finger rolls in the next level, le level so you can practice that now. If you want the curriculum for that first level, go to the link that's down below. And if you, if you can send me an email, I'll put you on the distribution list. So every time these things come out, I'll send them to you, not just the, the video, but all, all the requirements too and anything else that I come across is pretty cool. I'm gonna get some other martial artists that I know who are really good to uh, send me some things so we can send it out. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much and keep